Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And uh, today I am going to be doing my after action review of the counter robbery and EDC medical class that I took with Daryl Bulky from Hardwire Tactical Shooting and uh, Caleb Causey of Lone Star Medics. So before I jump in, real quick, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. Helps the channel out. And uh, once you've watched the video, if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't and you want to give it a thumbs down, at the very least, let me know what I could have done better. So that way I can do better. Uh, speaking of areas of improvement, try something a little bit different. What do you think? Sport coat and Henley? Yay? Nay? Hmm? Um, and so, yeah, aside from that, You've heard me talk about it pretty much every week, the Bespoke Solutions Facebook group. We've got a ton of good conversation going on in there about a variety of subjects, training included. So go check it out, and uh, I think you will uh, be definitely appreciative of that. So yeah, I'm actually referencing my training notebook on this one because there was a bunch of info. So uh, this is probably going to be a slightly longer video, and um, I will try and put timestamps down below for the, the various sections of it, but uh, you know, really, I think to, to get the full value out of it, you know, block some time off, buckle up, and watch the whole thing. So one thing that I started doing was, I think it's really useful, especially when people are considering whether they should take a class, is uh, knowing what the class is and what the class isn't, because you know that can kind of help to, to drive the training priorities. Now, what this class isn't, this one in particular, it's it's not entry level. Um, you definitely need to have some very strong, deliberate, safe gun handling. And the reason for that is because you are going to be taxed mentally through the course of this. And so it is important that the gun handling piece of the equation is already fairly well established so that that way it doesn't start falling apart when your brain is occupied with problem solving. Um, the other thing that this class isn't is it's not a shooting class. Um, the the one day version that I took, I don't, when I say we didn't shoot 50 rounds, we didn't shoot 50 rounds by a wide margin. Um, probably less than 30 if I had to do the math. And um, that's gonna be discouraging for some people, but for what it's worth, there are some industry experts out there, John Hearn specifically, where uh, he was talking with Lee Weems about how sometimes we shoot too much in shooting classes. This is definitely not one of those. So uh, while it is low round count, part of that is to, to keep it accessible when ammunition is harder to find. But the other part of it is that honestly, the, the trigger pulling is not the main focus of this class. So you're not going to get a lot more out of shooting more at a class like this. So if that's what it isn't, then let's talk about what it is. First and foremost, this is a decision-making class. Uh, one of the things that Daryl said very early on is that knowing when is far more important than knowing how. Uh, obviously, that is as it pertains to target discrimination and shooting decisions. Um, I'm not going to clarify that too much, and that is for two reasons. Number one is I want to make sure that I don't do a disservice to how the information was delivered, and the other part of it is the unfortunate reality of the internet being what it is, is that uh, stuff like this can very readily be taken out of context and then proliferated in a manner that really doesn't do the subject material justice, and so I really want to make sure that um, I'm not misrepresenting anything in the curriculum. But, you know, the, the idea is, is is that this really teaches you how to think with a gun in your hands, and it's to keep you from making irrevocable, life-changing mistakes. That's the whole idea. Uh, it is also high accountability. There, um, you're not really put in too many opportunities to miss necessarily because the, the shooting the shooting problems don't get super complicated um, but you are prohibited from even muzzling a no shoot target and to drive that point home what Daryl typically does 
is he has the students bring photos of their loved ones and those faces are what go up on the non-shoot targets. So I would have to explain to the guy next to me on the firing line why I muzzled his wife or his child or whomever else. Um, and that's, that's to drive home the point that it's not okay to point guns at people that don't need shot. And they, they do a, a very good job of, of driving that point home. So, um, just as some, some background, I did, a, uh, I did a video about when I took the Lone Star TACMED ADC standalone class. I'll link to that here. Um, Caleb was, a, was an Army medic. He's got a, a pretty significant background on the medical front, and obviously he's been running Lone Star Medics, so uh, he is definitely a subject matter expert on the medical side of the equation. But a lot of folks are not necessarily familiar with uh, Daryl Bolke and his, uh, his career. He was a California cop uh, in the 80s. And what's really, I guess, most relevant to this, the counter-robbery piece of the equation, is um, he's investigated like over 70-something shootings, I believe. And with that, what he saw established some trends in terms of circumstances that led to those shootings happening at all in the first place and then mistakes that got made when it comes to people's application of, of deadly force and so he brings that expertise to this to help you avoid making the mistakes that he's seen other people make so the class started with a safety brief as as all good firearms oriented classes do uh, and Daryl goes into his specific articulation of the rules of gun handling and what I like about what he does as well as some other you know very solid instructors uh, the way John Johnson articulates it the way Tom Givens articulates it is they are not range rules these are rules of firearms handling on and off the range it's one set of rules that you got to worry about so that that way number one you are not um, you don't have to keep track of two sets of rules. And also it just kind of, again, drives the point home that this is for real. This is not only relegated to the training environment. Um, once we got done with that, there was a brief time on the firing line and that's where Daryl kind of did his evaluation of the students in attendance to kind of get a baseline of where we were in terms of basic gun handling and processing. And then once we moved to the classroom, he began his portion of the lecture. One of the main tenets that he focuses on, he picked up from an old school Delta operator where um, it's the acronym C S E E. He's talked about this on a couple of his podcasts. Uh, it was so important that he actually had it written on his glove back when he was uh, working with the uh, with LAPD Metro. Um, and it stands for C, Evaluate and Eliminate. Now, in the context of applying deadly force, this is fairly straightforward, but the whole hierarchy of C, Evaluate and Eliminate is broader than that because it has to do with, once you get to the Evaluate stage, you are determining what the hands are doing, what level of threat this person is potentially presenting. And when it comes to eliminate, obviously it carries a very aggressive connotation to it, but it's it can be as simple as a don't move all the way up to shooting the dude in the face. So, you know, finding the appropriate level of force to respond to make sure that it is appropriately eliminated. Um, the interesting part of this is that this whole process is applied to every single shot. So you're not applying the, 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 the C to the first round and doing like a non-standard response of like three to five rounds to the body. The idea is, is that you need to be sh shooting at a cadence that allows you to evaluate whether additional force is necessary. Uh, this is something that tends to be a somewhat of a uh, 
a, a, a trigger <laughs> in some online discourse because there are folks that uh, will will disagree with that assessment. Uh, I will simply point to Daryl's commentary of how LAPD Metro trained when they were going through their shoot houses. Um, but basically my understanding is that they trained to about a half second split when they were doing their shooting to allow for that appropriate degree of processing time. When it comes to ready positions, Daryl has very specific ready positions that he likes to use in terms of low ready, contact ready, and uh, I'm blanking on the terminology of the third one, I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, but basically it is varying degrees of muzzle configuration to deal with either active threats, potential threats, or maneuvering around non-threats. And um, it's very useful because of how they flow together and uh, you get a real good exposure of that once we actually go into the practical exercises. At that point, the, uh, the handoff took place and that's where Caleb uh, came up and started doing his portion of the TACMED EDC. And uh, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, I will uh, go ahead and, and link it so that way you can watch the, the full description of that course. The main focuses for him were going to be uh, the, the focus of cover versus concealment, especially when you are talking about uh, not only incoming bullet fire, but if you are dealing with a mass casualty event that has to do with some kind of explosives, whether that be uh, intentional or like industrial accident kind of deal, you want to make sure that uh, you are, are not in the path of anything that's going to be whizzing toward you rapidly. Um, the one thing that has caught at least one person in every single medical class that I've taken, and at this point this was my third, is scene safety. It screws somebody up every single time because you just spent the last X hours learning all this high-speed medical stuff. So as soon as the opportunity presents itself to apply it, you jump right in and then you wind up getting smoked <laughs> because you didn't first make sure that scene safety was established. So that's your spoiler alert. Whenever you take a medical class, doesn't matter if it's from Caleb or from Carrie Davis at uh, Dark Angel Medical, they both screw people up with this. And I don't feel bad saying it ahead of time because I forgot. So if you're watching this, Eva Money says, next medical class you take, you're going to forget about it too. <laughs> um, and that's just, I, you know, I, I want to put that out because that was a failure point of mine. So scene safety, obviously, uh, drags and carries kind of plays into that scene safety as well as the, co the cover concealment thing. Uh, and then uh, the other big piece that Caleb is fond of is essentially dry practice with a tourniquet. And his part-time is 12 seconds. That is the Lone Star Medic standard for a tourniquet application is 12 seconds. And the nice thing was, is during the course of the lecture, there were multiple dry runs. So you got pretty good at that. Uh, once we got the medical portion addressed, that is when we uh, broke for lunch. And then after lunch, we adjourned back out to the range. And this is where the, the range drills were set up. And again, I'm going to be purposefully vague on this because, and at Daryl's request, uh, both to kind of protect the, the integrity and the intellectual property of the material, um, as well as to make sure that nobody misinterprets it and then tries to go and duplicate it in an incorrect fashion and, and doesn't get the, uh, the value out of the drill that's intended. But suffice to say, what happens is you are presented with a situation that involves both no-shoot targets that remember you are not allowed to muzzle as well as a target that requires you to evaluate whether or not it is a threat and if so how much it needs to be shot. I made bad shooting decisions on that. Uh, at least a couple of the other students did as well. Um, and it's one of those things where there are absolutely, in these scenarios, opportunities if you're not paying attention and especially if you are responding with the convention of a typical square range shooting drill, you can very easily muzzle a no-shoot 
and you can pretty easily make an inappropriate shooting decision as well. So none of this is on autopilot. None of it is even pre-need decision making. None of this is myelinated response. Uh, it requires active thought and processing every single time. You're not just waiting on the beep to, you know, to, to start shooting. So it, there is active thought and engagement in all of these drills. And this is really where kind of the, the secret sauce of the class lies is within that. Uh, at, at that point, the class then split off. So half of the class went back into the classroom and we were doing medical drills like practicing the, the tourniquet standards, the drags and carries, the, the wound packing, as well as Caleb, if you had your own medical loadout already, he was kind of doing a, uh, a, a very, very kind and gracious roast my rig uh, kind of deal where he would evaluate what you had, where, you know, where the, the pros were, where the opportunities for improvement were, etc. And this is when Daryl was running people through the final exercise. And the final exercise was scenario based. The interesting thing about this one was instead of the students going through individually, this one was you had multiple people at play. So there were multiple friendlies, there were no shoots, and there was a potential threat all within the confines of the scenario. And once the go command was given, you are presented with the final details and you have to triage the whole thing in terms of what's important right now, shuffling the task stacking to make the most appropriate decisions in the order that they need to be made in. Um, again, I don't want to give this away simply because <laughs> the answer, the, the, the right answer, quote unquote, especially as Daryl and Caleb presented it, um, was annoyingly apparent when you saw it from the outside. Now, granted, they have the answers to the test, but it's one of those where once they run everybody through and they go, you want to see how we do it? You watch it and just go, of course. So um, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that, though. Suffice to say, well worth the cost of admission. I always like to wrap these up with using the 3x3 model that the short-barreled shepherd introduced me to. Well, I was introduced to on his channel. Uh, and so the first is going to be the top three things that were covered. The top three things that were covered, no muzzles on anything that's a non-threat ever, period, hard stop. It's not okay to point guns at people that don't need shot. Daryl is big on that. If you listen to any of his podcasts, I'm sure you've heard this rant. And he really just tries to embed that in people's brains as much as possible. The other one is, again, the, uh, the making sure that the scene is secure. Because before you start rendering aid, before you start moving, all that kind of stuff, you need to make sure that the threat has been appropriately addressed and that you are not jeopardizing other people in the process of addressing that threat. And then the other big component of it, the big takeaway, is that see, eliminate, evaluate. The, 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 the less time that you have, the, the more that you can compress that process, then it's going to set you up for success. When it comes to my three biggest takeaways, um, honestly, one of them was not, if you're not training not to shoot, it kind of screws you. If every repetition that you've done in terms of drawing from a holster has been drawing and firing without an evaluation between those two steps, this is not one of those things where it's going to get you killed in the streets. However, if you haven't practiced applying the brakes, there are definitely opportunities that can come back and bite you in the ass with that. So uh, the first time I was really exposed to this actually was, was Gabe White's uh, block at TACCON in New Orleans, where quite literally he would um, 
blow a whistle to try and get people to stop firing in the middle of a string of fire. Um, and it, people have a hard time putting the brakes on. So practice that more. The other big takeaway was that gear didn't matter. It was, it was, it was kind of interesting. Um, I ran the whole class with a with my, my J-Frame and with my P32 kel -Tec. And at no point in any of the scenarios was I undergunned or did I perform any worse than the folks running um, like, you know, red dot Glock 19s. So I'm not that great of a shooter. One of the reasons that I brought the revolver to this course was since it is so frequently recommended as a gun for somebody who's new to firearms, I hadn't really shot the thing much in the past several years. And so, you know, while my base gun handling skills, my base draw manipulation, you know, grip trigger press and all that are, are pretty good, on a Glock 19, running the J-frame through this class was as cold as I could possibly be. I still had the foundation of my overall skill as a shooter, but in terms of with this particular firearm, it was basically a new gun. I didn't have any problem getting my hits. I didn't have any problem picking up the sights. So that is at least somewhat proof of concept for me that yes, J-frames can be suitable choices for new shooters, provided that you're running the right ammo. I was running 38 wad cutters to this thing not full house magnums. Full house magnums in this thing sucks. Thirdly, biggest takeaway is um, if you have the opportunity, don't be there. And when the opportunity presents itself to get out, get out. Don't get so task fixated that you miss opportunities. That was my third big takeaway on this. Um, and then when it comes to things that uh, that I'm going to be doing differently. I only really have two that I think I'm going to be changing. One of them is introducing no shoots and no muzzle targets into some of the drills that I get to do. There's a local range that does skills and drills a couple times a month, and I'm talking with the uh, with the guy that runs that to see if we can uh, possibly introduce some of this. He is a graduation of Paul Howes, excuse me, a graduate of Paul Howes CSAT. And some of this methodology is used there as well. So it's a concept that he's familiar with. Um, the other big thing is just making sure in the scenarios that you are using all of the available resources. Um, you don't feel like you have to solve the problem yourself if there are people there that can help you. So uh, yes, I know. Some of this is a little ambiguous and some of it is a little too ambiguous to really be of use. What I'm hoping is that this piqued enough interest that it highlights the relevance of the class, especially if you've already got a decent baseline of mechanical shooting, find a thinking class and try and get in on one as soon as you realistically can because this is a segment of the defensive uh, arena that really doesn't get as much attention. And honestly, while it's not necessarily something that can be, you know, flexed and shown off on social media, it's a bunch of fun too. Like just the 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 intel the, the, the puzzle solving element of it is super engaging. So if you're worried that it's gonna be tedious, it's not. Um, it's it's amazingly entertaining as well as being a valuable skill set. So check it out. If you have any other questions on the class, put them in the description below. I will do my best to answer them while still staying within the parameters that they asked me to stay within. And uh, aside from that, if you are finding stuff like this useful, uh, I really do appreciate the folks that have signed up on Patreon. Uh, I am not going to disclose any additional information to the patrons that is not out there, but in the same vein, um, the patrons do get a little bit more direct access. So if there are you know questions or things that, that uh, they want me to expand on, that's something that I can sometimes go into a little bit more depth uh, in, in a controlled environment. So let me know what you think. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And aside from that, hope everybody has a great week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.